Welcome in to Moving the Chains, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas alongside Drell Hendricks. Got a great interview today, a very special guest here for our 2024 season preview, and that's the head coach of the Powdersville Patriots, Robert Muster. Coach, how are you doing today? Doing well. Hope you guys are. We are, and we appreciate your time. We really do. If this is you guys' first time tuning in, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, slash X, Instagram, YouTube, and more at Moving Chains, website movingchains.com, podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Coach Muster, we headed into his 13th season with the Patriots. They went 5-6 and six last season, finished third in the region, and fell in the first round of the playoffs. Coach, let's start um, You know, looking at maybe your offseason. You know, I know last year you guys had to make some changes on the coordinator spots. You had some guys leave for head coaching jobs and whatnot. Any changes on the staff this season heading into the 2024 uh, campaign? Actually, no. I mean, our, our, um, our staff has stayed intact. We didn't lose anybody. We didn't gain anybody. Um, and I can tell you consistency is very nice. Um, and man, well, I think we've got a great coaching staff and we've got some guys who are former head coaches that are on our staff. You got Kyle Stewart, who used to be the head coach over at Liberty. He's on our staff. You got Doug Shaw, who used to be the head coach at, well, he was at Carolina. He was at Malden. He was at, he was at Palmetto. He's with us. And man, I've got, uh, Johnny Brewer, um, Stephen Emmer, guys who've been with us, uh, since like our second varsity season, which would have been 12 years ago. And I've got some guys like this, uh, Bajay Lewis. Uh, he came to us from Lawrence, great young coach. Um, EJ Humphrey, a former player of mine. Um, that's that's the first I've had of one of those come back. And he had a, a great career here. He went on to North Greenville, did some great things. Uh, Josh McWaters, uh, was, he's from the Pendleton area, um, does a great job with our receivers. And Bernard Rambert, former you know, Somerville and Clemson guy. And um, – you know, just these guys, it is it's, it's great having around. They're, they're great, I think, role models for our kids, and we want them to stick around as long as they're willing to stick around. Coach, one of the cool and unique things about um, high school football is you kind of got to curtail your, your scheme and your system to who you have, you know, player personnel-wise that, that year. Um, you know, what are some of the schemes <clears throat> and, you know, what are maybe some of the base things that you guys are going to run on offense and defense this upcoming season? Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll flip the question a little bit to defense. Um, you know, this is going to be the first year in quite a while where we don't we're not running a true three man front. Um, we we've got it's just a personnel thing, and and we're going to see what happens. I, I'll tell you this: like our defense, I think Coach Nemer and that side of the ball, those coaches, I think do a tremendous job. Um, it's no secret we've struggled to stop the run um, in years past, and it's shown. Um, you know. Somebody slinging the ball all over the place, man. We, we can hang right there with you, and and it's just that's kind of been like our Achilles right there was was stop and run game. That's just a point blank honest answer, man. We look pretty good stop and run this year so far. Now it's early on, you know. We've had uh, two scrimmages. I felt like you know our kid, our defense has come out and looked very well, especially that first unit when we send them out there on the field. But we're going more to a four man front, and that's all really based off of just the kind of kid we got. Um, we've got more of an interior kid this year um, and some a little bit of backup or depth to go along with that that we feel like, you know, we're more suited for that. Let's get our best players on the field. Plus, we've got some guys who I don't know if you consider them like defensive ends or maybe outside linebacker type kids, really. But we got them walked up, uh, rush in type kids. And, man, they're they bought into it so far. So, um so far, so good. Uh, we've got a jam breed tomorrow night where we go to Tio Hanna. Uh, so get punched in the mouth real quick over there and, and get tested. But that's what we want. We want to say that we've seen, you know, the best that we could have seen um, before we get into um, non-region and region play. Um, offensively, scheme's not changing very much. You know, we've got different quarterback. It's the first time in a long time. we got a kid named Kagan Reed. Um, he's going to be a junior for us. He's 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 taller than what we've had in the past. And, like you know, Eli Hudgens did a great job for us for four years. He's a kid that could beat you with his arm or his feet. Um, Kagan's going to be more of a pocket-type passer. Um, he can run the ball, but so far, so, you know, so far, so good um, in, the, in the preseason stuff. Like I was mentioning about the defense, he's going to be able to stand a little bit more in the pocket. He's a taller kid. Um, when I think about the history of Powersville High School football, We've had two kids that can probably really see over the line really well, and, and it's been quite a while since we've had one of those. Um, he's, he's making some wise decisions early on this, you know, in the preseason, um, and I think he's I, 
I'm really looking forward to what I think he's going to bring to the table for us. Coach, we're sitting here, you know, it's mid-August. You mentioned you already had some scrimmages. Of course, you've already had, you know, seven-on-seven season in the summer, all that stuff. What were you able to learn about your team throughout that process and even so early now here kind of in, in fall camp, I guess? Well, I mean, you know, every year it starts over. Um, and I, I truth be told, you know, last year we expected to be making a deep push in the playoffs, and it didn't happen. You know, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and make up excuses either. Um, but I will tell you, injuries are not a good thing, okay? On top of that, um, there was a little team chemistry. There was a little rift in the, in the chemistry. And I think, you know, and it starts with me. I, 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 I'm I never going to throw anybody under the bus. It starts with me. I, I felt like we should have been back. I think as a whole, the attitude was, oh, we're going to be back. But we, we changed some things we were doing. And I'm not talking about um, calling plays or philosophy-wise. I think it was just like, you know, we did this year before. Why are we not doing this again? If you want to, we had the blueprint, and, and I, you know, it was, you know, why are we, why are we bucking it a little bit? Why we, we know these are things we're gonna do. Don't ask questions. Let's just do them. So I think we've gotten back to that a little bit more. And, um, you know, the kids, man, their attitudes have been great. Um, you know, we're looking to develop leaders all the time, and it's that's a hard thing to do. That's a hard thing to do. Is is lead your peer, especially when you're a high school age kid, because everybody, I'm sure, I don't think there's a single person out to say, well, I don't want to be popular or I don't want to be, you know, disliked. Um, you know, so leading your peers and, and, and getting out of your comfort zone. And man, listen, you can get in their face during, during a practice. They screw up in a game. I'm good with it then, as long as you're doing your part. But then today, the put your arm around them, hug them, love on them. And I'm talking about the players doing that to each other. And sometimes that's an unpopular thing. And I think this year we've got some guys who are going to be able to do it and do it in the right way. Coach, I want to talk a little bit about last season. You mentioned, you know, chemistry being a little bit off, dealing with injuries. And, you know, you're you're, you're trying to fine-tune some things because you do have the blueprint. I mean, you guys played for a state title a couple of years ago. You know, and I, I was looking through your schedule. I think you lost three of those contests last year by a total of five points. You know, how have you kind of used that as, as motivation, you know, going into this year? And, and, and what are maybe some more things that you've kind of emphasized with these guys going into the year? Well, okay, so you bring back a very sore spot with me. Um, <laughs> those, Unintentional, Coach. Those, Unintentional. Yeah, I, but it, but it's, here's the thing. So those those losses, man, I mean, you talk about gut-wrenching. Um, we're playing Broom here week zero last year. And listen, they had a good one-two punch with their quarterback and running back. I mean, it was, you know, in, in, in throwing a ball, running a ball, just, I mean, the, the mix up between which one of the two of them was going to be keeping if it was a run. I mean, it was, it was a good balance they had going. Um, they came out and played really, really good. Talking about broom in the first half. We, we, it's like we took the first half off. Um, kind of had a little bit of an attitude adjuster at halftime. We come back out and man, we played really well in the second half. It's hard to win a ball game when you play two quarters out of the four that are offered for you. We end up uh, – we're down late, and, um, I mean, we're down by seven. And I think it's maybe a minute and, I don't know, 20-something seconds left to go in the game. They kick off to us. Um, uh, we take it back for a touchdown. I elect to go for two because I'm thinking we just stole the momentum. We don't come up with it. That's a gamble we take, right? Um, that's on me. We lose by one point. All right. The next week we get, we're, we're playing and hosting um, Abbeville. We end up, I think it was a 24 point lead that we had at one point in that game. And we end up losing in overtime by one point because we let down our guard and we started doing some different things in that game. We played lights out in the first half, second half. It was like, we're comfortable. We're going to start doing things that, that we're, we weren't doing in the first half. And um, trying to do too much, and and man, it cost us. So first two games we lost by a combined score of two points. That that's some sleepless nights right there. Um, we play Wren here. We host them. We lose to them, I believe, by three. And doing some things that we haven't done. And and they were a good team. So you're looking. You're like, okay, well, you won five games, man. We should have at least been eight and whatever. All right, and then hosting a playoff game. All right. So that, that's tough. That's tough. Um, so I think learning from your mistakes, the biggest thing is those games, especially after the first two, 
we had to have a wake up call because it was kind of like something went wrong. And then we were immediately expecting for something else to continue to go wrong instead of what we tell the kids. Hey, if you make a mistake, don't let that turn into two negatives or two mistakes. And we were we were doing the exact opposite of that. It was like we messed up. Oh, here we go again. And luckily, week three or not, I'm sorry, week two, it was our third opponent we had last year was Malden came over here and and we um, were able to win a game. And it felt like, hey, we're going to get, you know, rolling now or whatever. And then we played Pendleton. We're able to get a win there. Um, And it was just kind of like touch and go. And it was just – it was a different feeling. And, man, it's just – we got a clean slate. I'm ready to start over. Um, We have started over. Uh, Summertime, I don't – and you asked me this a minute ago about seven-on-sevens. And I don't get into them too much. We do them because we got to do them. I mean, if you don't, you're going to be behind. You're you're allowed to do ten of them. We do five, you know. And one of those we're going to take our JV. So really, varsity. We went to four. One of them's a tournament that was at uh, Pendleton. The others are, hey man, let's get together with some dudes I respect, and let's let's just you know see some different faces and throw around a little bit. Um, we spend more time really with ourselves, making corrections. Sometimes during seven on seven, there's not a lot of downtime, and I feel like man, if we can get like an hour, you know outside after we hit the weights or something like that, man, then I feel like we can learn more about ourselves in the summer doing it that way. Um, that's what I believe. That's for us. That's not for everybody. Um, there's some schools that, man, they're so happy about seven on sevens and winning those tournaments and stuff. And that's great, you know, but th- that's not our focus, man. We, we need to develop some other things. Um, so I hope I answered your question about last year and kind of, you know, the, those, those defeats and kind of learning from them. Um, but right now, I feel like we're in a good place. Don't want to be a comfortable place, you know. So what, what we're seeing now is we're seeing that we're ahead of where we were last year whenever it comes to this point that we've had scrimmages. Like I said, we go to Tio Hanna for a jamboree tomorrow night. We'll learn a lot about ourselves after that. Um, this is a good group of kids, though, man. Fun group to be around. Like I said, the leadership, I think, is going to be there. Um, and that'll, that'll kind of that'll be tested throughout the season because there's going to be some lows. Are we looking perfect right now? Heck no, nobody is. You know, there's, we're looking sloppy. Some of the teams we're, we're, we're scrimmaging or whatever are going against, they're looking sloppy right now. Um, but that's the way it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to be playing your peak game right now. Um, you know, I, I'd rather us progress throughout the season, get better. You know, so, so we're learning some things, getting film on kids, going back. And that's the nice thing about scrimmages. You get some film, you can tell a kid, hey, look, you think you're doing this perfect. Let's let's take a look and see like what what's the what's the true story, you know. So that's reviewing stuff. That's where we are right now. Yeah, they uh what's it say the, the eye in the sky never lies, right, the coach? Eye in the sky <laughs> no lies what they say. Well, coach, who are some special guys you've been able to identify that should be some, some big time playmakers, maybe some breakout, you know, contributors for you guys here uh, here this fall. Yeah, so offensively I've already talked about Kagan Reed going to be a junior. Um talking about him at quarterback. Brandon Waldrop is a running back for us. Um, he split some some time last year with um, Jaden Pepper, who, who was a senior last year. And uh, Brandon's a grinder. Um, he's not a kid that, you know, he, he's not going to complain. He's going to do exactly – he's one of the most coachable kids I've ever been around. Um, good hands come out of the backfield, so you can use them on some routes. Um, he's going to punch it in there hard. Um, he's going to block. He's going to do everything. And, and he's not just going to be on offense. He might have to play a little defense. He's he's on several special teams. Um, but he's 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 a winner. He's a winner, and that's contagious attitude being around him. Um, Elijah Huggins on offense. You know, you've, you've heard that name before. He's been around for quite a while. Um, he's special, you know, and, and I've, I've said this probably to you guys before and the last time we talked, but, man, good things come in small packages, and that kid's dynamite. I mean, that kid – he is if, – if there's a blueprint of, like, this is what a student athlete should be like. I mean, he's got the grades. Um, he's got the work ethic. He Everybody is, is wants to gravitate around this kid. Um, he's got to get an offer soon. I mean, we took – I took him to the Citadel this summer. He loved it. You know, there's the, and I went there, but there's not many kids that are like, hey, you know, that's, that's where I want to go. I mean, I, I – and. I was thinking that day, man, he's going to walk away with something because he was the dude at that camp. Um, didn't happen. They're going to keep an eye on him. But, man, don't let size be a reason you're not doing something because um, this kid will fool you. 
he's going to make you look bad. He's physical. He's strong. He's um he's obviously fast. But, man, the things this kid does, and, and I'll say this just because I wish there were more kids out there in other high schools doing this. Since day one his freshman year, all right, in the cafeteria, we've got three lunches. And and during during his lunch, when the bell rings and it's over with, if there's if somebody leaves their junk on the table, he's in there cleaning up somebody else's trash. And it's so I praise it. And what happens now it becomes contagious, and you got other kids doing it. And it's and it and but he started that. And 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 you can fake something one time, but man, four years later, you're still doing the same thing. You know, his senior year. So um, that's just the kind of kid. His character's great. So you got you know you you got those guys um. Uh, Devias Wardell, we're looking for big things out of him at left tackle. Um, Jed Rogers is a uh, going to play some right tackle for us, along with playing some defense for us. Um, and I'm, I'm right now, I'm trying to think of just mainly, you know, my seniors, give them a little bit of a shout out. Deshaun Knuckles is a kid that's is a two way guy. Um, at least early this season, he will be um, playing some receiver and, and, and defensive back is really his home. Um, you know, he's uh, Deshaun has been playing for us on a varsity level since his ninth grade. He's never played any JV. Um, he, Eli Hudgens is the only other kid in our program that ever did that. You know, we try to get them in there, develop them if they're not ready. But man, he was clearly the best we could put out there at corner his freshman year. So we just kind of continued. Another kid that'd be on a, a ton of special teams. So he's playing both ways. And we got to, you know, when I feel like we can pull the trigger on getting some other kids out there on those special teams to get these guys a breather, we will. But right now, I, I don't believe in just those those special teams get you beat. So let's let's put who were the best of the best and then how we can groom guys throughout the season. Um, Elijah Bell is, is, is a guy that we're looking forward to. He's a, he's a very good wrestler for us, too. He uses that leverage and, and, and um, that balance he's learned in, in wrestling out there on the football field. Um, does a tremendous job for us uh, as a guard. Nashawn Shoulders, another senior. That man, he's. I got two of them right now battling injuries, and and with, you know he just he he had a I believe it was ACL um, tear. He in the off season he got it. He had surgery on it. Worked his butt off and coming back. We have a scrimmage the other night, and he dislocates his elbow. So there's a little bit of a setback. But, you know, we're hoping that's not going to be too long. Um, so those are really the seniors. And then, um, and, you know, so then on the defense side of the ball, um, speaking about an injured kid, you know, that we're looking to get back soon, um, Brendan Works, um, tall, good-looking kid, um, filled out very nice, um, plays plays defensive back for us, mainly, mainly a safety position. He, um, man, we were, he's another one that had, had surgery. It was after his track season. And, man, we thought, you know, man, he's going to be back for these scrimmages. Well, we're kind of pumping the brakes a little bit. You know, now we want to make sure, like, he's good to go. Um, he's, you know, our trainer is saying he's he's almost 100%, you know. But um, that kid, man, he's it's just the resiliency on some of these kids. Sometimes you get an injury and it's like they might fold and say, man, I, it's just not for me. And like Nashawn's case, you know, you work so hard, and then here's a different part of your body getting hurt before the season even gets started. So, man, it's hats off to them, man. They're, they're a tough group of kids. Um, talked about Knuckles already, you know, when a uh, little preview on him whenever I start talking about offensive and defense kid playing both ways. Will Wilkerson, um, man, he pound for pound. Well, not pound for pound. He's probably he is our strongest kid in the weight room. Um, kid who's had a great – Great all season throwing a shot put, you know, discus and track. Um, Busts his butt at that craft, comes out here in football. This will be his third year with us. And and he is hard nosed, man. He's an old school type kid. And he might have to play some both ways as well, along with Miles Fowler. Um, both those guys are, are your interior guys on the defensive line. Um, Miles Fowler, um, you know, you've heard the Fowlers. We had Trez Fowler, you know, two years ago was a senior. Xavier Fowler was it was a uh, knucklehead and a and a and a senior last year and now you got Miles and they're, they're three brothers, great kids, love them to death. Nothing alike though. You wouldn't you wouldn't think they were brothers. They're they're just their mannerisms and stuff are so different. But man, they're great kids. Um, I'm with Joy uh, having this last one uh, this year. But um, very athletic, good sized kid. You know, in, in the middle on the defensive line, uh, Javi Mills. 
um, as a kid, you know, that, that had a breakout season, I felt like, on varsity last year. Um, he's back, and he's going to be one of those ends for us, um, along with Xavier Mays. Um, he, he's We're really looking forward to, man. He has really stepped it up. Um, he's had a great offseason. He's also going to be playing some running back. Um, Jacob Matoka is a kid that plays linebacker for us, and um, and he's – he, man, you talk about a smart kid that, that, and I tell you how smart. I mean, he's, he's, he's really kind of in love with, with Davidson. And, and, you know, they've had a coach come up and see him and talk to him. And that's kind of a brainiac school, but I mean, he would, he would excel there. He's a very smart kid, um, leads to example, um, athletic. I mean, he made some play for it, you know, two years ago, pick against Clinton to kind of seal the deal in that upper state game. But, um, he had a great year last year. Um, so we're looking forward to having him back. Um, Reese Rice is a corner that, that, you know, has been with us, and he did some special things in the second half of last season. So, I, I if, man, if you're a senior and, I, and you're a, like a projected starter and I left you off, I apologize, but I think I named just about all those guys. We appreciate that, Coach. I'm sure they do too. And um, if something happens, maybe we can just give them a shout out in a different way. So we'll, we'll make that work for you, <laughs> uh, Coaches. We, we're catching you kind of late, you know, before the season. We're about to get kicked off here. You mentioned you got a a, a jamboree lined up. You're going to be playing T.L. Hannah, Coach Tone, and that offense. They bring something different to the table. That's one of the the better programs in the state of South Carolina as well. Um, you know. What are you looking forward to in that matchup against them? And then also kind of going back a little bit this summer, who have you lined up against, you know, in previous jamborees this summer or scrimmages? Because I remember, man, the, the only thing that got me through fall camp back in the day was being able to go hit somebody else, you know, every every other other day or so. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, try to answer your question in order. So, Tio Hanna, you know, man, we're going over there, and I know we're going to see a quality opponent. That, that's, 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 that's the – the good thing, okay, let's come out. Let's try to come out of there without any injuries. Would be the second good thing. Uh, let's put something on film we can go back and and uh, maybe make some corrections because nothing's going to be perfect. We know that, um, and it's been quite a while since we've seen a team that does anything other than spread. Uh, go back to Abbeville, you know, week, you know, we played week at Broom week zero last year, Abbeville week one. So it's been since week one of last year that we've seen anybody do anything differently. I um, hope I'm not forgetting another team, but but um, I, I'm I'm so in favor of going against them because we do play Abbeville, and and although it's not the exact same, it's it's not what we do, you know, and what we do is very common with what a lot of other people do. So we see enough of ourselves in practice. Let's see some other schemes and philosophies um, early in the season, so we can kind of get ready for those other opponents that might come across with a similar look. They're going to be big. They're going to be physical. They're going to be fast. Coach Tone does a great job. I've got a lot of respect for that guy and his program, the way they do things. Um, so, yeah, we're looking forward to going over there. And, and it's weird because, you know, Anderson County Schools, there's eight of us, okay? And we always used to do this Anderson County Jamboree. And, and it really started getting tricky because there were some years where the only two teams in Anderson County that we didn't have on our schedule were Tio Hanna and Westside. And, and then, you know, there were some years where, you know, we were in the, so in the Jamboree, we're playing T.O. Hanna or Westside, T.O. Hanna or Westside every single year, and it gets a little repetitive. Well, other coaches started feeling the same way. So two years ago, um, we branched out to um, – actually, it wasn't me. Um, just Anderson County Schools um, were, were maybe teamed up with some Oconee County Schools, maybe Pickens County Schools. I can't remember who else. And and we went, up, we went and played um, – this Georgia South Carolina deal where we played some some teams on the other side of the lake. And I remember um the first year it was um Hart County in Georgia, right across the lake, played host to, to the games or whatever. We matched up against Franklin County. And um yeah, I was like, man, this is pretty good, you know. Um the second year when all the teams are supposed to now come to South Carolina and we're gonna make the money. Okay. Um I there weren't contracts that were done and some of these schools backed out okay so was, so sheldon evans who orchestrated this thing did, did a great job okay um but he had to go find some replacement teams and stuff and so that thing kind of we were done with it and now we're just picking up we're calling this thing a jamboree tomorrow night but what, what it really is is our jv is going to play like a first half and then varsity's going to play a second half at tio hannah 
next year they're going to return a favor, come to us so we can make some money off of it. So, and I think that's good. Now you got everybody, your whole fan base can be in one place at one time. So we've never done this before, but it's going to be, it's going to be different. Um, and I, and I, and I'm, I'm in favor of it. Um, so that's what we're looking for from Teal Hannah, just the physicality, I think, um, just kind of pound you right in the face, uh, you know, early. I think that's good to get that. Um, that's what you need. Um, so that's, that's where we are preseason, you know, um, we, we've, we've gone to West side. Um, and then, and that was last Thursday. And then we, um, the other night we were at, um, Greer for, for a scrimmage. And it wasn't it wasn't a multiple team deal. It was just that that's who we saw the whole time was that one day it was West Side and the next day or next time we went and had a scrimmage that was against Greer. And I thought that our kids got better. That's what you want to see. You know, against West Side, man, there were some things we did that looked very sloppy. We know they're gonna be good. And we told our kids, man, there's the defending four A state chance and now playing in, in five A. And um, are you scared? No, you're not scared. Let's go play ball. You know, you're going to live, you're going to survive. And we got better. And and that was great because we were able to see some good things you did on film. You saw some bad things you can correct, but you saw some good things too. And against Greer, I thought we we got much better um, compared to when we went against Westside. So um, it's, a, it's a process and you just got to trust it. Coach, with the new realignment, you guys, you know, you're staying in 3A, but a lot of new teams in your region there in Region 2, 3A. Were you surprised with kind of how that shook out? And then also – do you have to change your your off season, you know, preparation all playing some some unfamiliar opponents here in the region play now looking forward to, to this campaign? Uh well, so playing some different um teams that we have in the past. We we like I said, Seneca was part of our region before. Um, I even think we were playing them some non region before they got in a region and they got out. So we're familiar with them. This will be the third year in a row we played Abbeville. Wren, we're always going to play because, you know, that's who we broke off from. They're right, they're like five, six, seven miles, whatever it is down the road. Pendleton, we always play them. And then Broome, um, we've been playing them week zero. That just kind of got pushed back um, to the last non-region game. So none of that's really changed due to this, um, due to this. I, I will say that it's it's going to be different. Um and, and but I am, I'm looking forward to it. And here and here's why, man. The it's nice to do something different every once in a while. Just like you know, it's nice playing host, and everybody's like, man, I, I'm ready to be home, ready to be home. I'm ready. Yeah, I like playing at home, but I like going on the road to somewhere you hadn't been before. You know, and, and sometimes things get so repetitive that you're like the novelty wears off a little bit. Um, you know. Carolina has has been in our region before. We hadn't played them since they weren't in our region. And that's been, you know, a couple of realignments ago. Palmetto's back in our region. All right. Then you got Christ Church and St. Joseph's and Southside Christian. And um, I've never been in a, a region with any of the private schools. And then here we are. And it's going to be different. But, man, it's, I think it's going to be a neat deal to go somewhere where you haven't been. And, and you know, I'll go ahead and set this straight. Um and I don't know how popular this is. I don't. I don't care how popular this is. This is this is my philosophy and what we're telling our coaches here at Pattersville High School and what we what we're going to tell our kids. Like, welcome to the region. What? And I and I sincerely mean that. You know that they, they, they. You know there was a there was a plan for, you know, to have a multiplier and all this and 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 that fell into place there in our region, and I want them to feel welcome. Um, you know, the process for whatever reason that anybody was, you know, uptight about, it was put into motion. And, and man, I've met these coaches. They, they seem like some great dudes. And, and, and being an athletic director also, um, we met with, you know, we have region meetings. I met with, I've met with these ADs, and I think, man, the world of them, there's some great people. They're leading their kids to do some special things. And I told them, I said, I never want you to ask, because they did. They were like, what do you guys feel about us coming in the region? It was like a collective, like the three ADs kind of asked that. And I said, I never want you guys to ask that again. Like you're in the region. You ought to feel welcome in the region, you know. So so we're, we're looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to, you know, when we go, I think we go to Christ Church this year. I think the other two are coming to us, but we've never played there before, you know. So so it's, it's, it's new. It should be exciting. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. 
Need a new ride to get you to the big game? Founders Federal Credit Union has auto loan rates that'll get you in the driver's seat without breaking the bank. And here's the best part. No payment for up to 90 days. Drive to victory with a loan that suits your budget. Visit foundersfcu.com slash auto today and score your dream car with an auto loan from Founders. Terms and conditions apply. Member qualification required. Coach, a couple more before we let you go today. Uh, I, I, we talked off air. You guys, you know, you're playing week zero. You, you've done that now for a couple of years in a row. Do you like kind of getting that early start so you get that buy later on, or would you prefer to maybe have that extra week of prep, or does it kind of depend on the season with the team that you got, really? Man, it's a catch-22. Um, I, I was very adamant that we were not going to play week zero this year. Um, and I and that's why – that's so we had been. The first time we ever played week zero was, was – uh, or was it two years ago when we went to Broome? And then and last year they came to us, so that fulfilled that. And I told Coach Fleming, I was like, man, I, I'm I'm good. Like, we – because it, it, it gets to you so quick. It's a rush. You feel like, are we prepared? Could we gotten in, you know, spread our scrimmages out a little bit, maybe had a later jamboree, something. Um, it's like a little later dress rehearsal. Um, and it's just things that, you know, it sneaks up on you a little bit. And I, I don't care how much you think you're ready. You're just like, oh, man. You know, it's not – and I'm not talking about the coaching part of it. It's just the the administrative side of it, the everything. The like, hey, this is our first – you know, we're, we're hosting a, a home game. You know, we got enough gate workers, all this kind of junk. And, and every – every, and I guess that's more of an AD kind of thing. But, crap, there was a year, two years ago, first year we played week zero, I think it was. You know, I'm, we're getting ready to go out in the field, and our kids are like, hey, coach, we, we put in – we put helmet decals on, stickers on the side of our helmets. I was like, oh, yeah, there's that. <laughs> so it, it is – and, I, and I'm, I'm a knucklehead anyway. But, man, I mean, so yeah, it just sneaks up on you. So I was very adamant we weren't going to do it. All right, talked to Coach Fleming. I said, if you can find anywhere else on your schedule for us to play, let's do it. We end up hooking up for a week um, – what is it, week, week four – all right, because then we'll have um, a bye week before our region play starts. But then I'm forced into the way the schedule worked out. And everybody, man, when these realignments come out, it's like it's like everybody's hitting, you know, the stock market all at the same time. And people are wheeling and dealing and making these, you know, calls. And, and if you don't if you're not on, you know, on the spot, you're going to get left behind. And, and so, you're, you know. It was like, oh, we got to make a decision. I don't want to play week zero, but Coach Crane is asking if we can play week zero, and it, it worked out. So we got, you know, our full schedule, but, yeah, we had to revert to going back to playing week zero. So it is what it is. I mean, it's – and I, I think there's – you know, it used to be there were fewer and fewer teams that did it. Now when you talk to people, it's like, I'm thinking, yeah, we're one of the few, and then, oh, you're playing week zero too. You're playing week zero. So it's – I think more teams are going to it. And, and here's the thing. After that first one, you know, then you're, then you're thankful. You know, then you're like, all right, well, we're in a groove. You know, we, we've we've already got that first one under our belt. So, I don't know. There you go. Coach, I don't know if we've asked you this before. We've, we've talked multiple times, but i got to ask the requisite food question. Um, Powdersville area, what are some go-to spots for you? Kevin and I are foodies. We need to know, man, if we're coming over for a Friday night and we want to grab a bite to eat before the game, where should we yeah. go? That's a that's a great question. If you will t- and listen, man, I don't brag, okay, but there is one thing I will speak very highly of myself about is, and I know some good food. All okay. right, my coaches pick on me. They're like, if you need a food recommendation, go ask Mustard. Okay, um, I will tell you that in town here, all right, there, we've got a place called Nick Henry's, and Nick Henry's has it's like the home of the bird dog, and I'm sure you guys know what a bird dog is. So, um, but Nick Henry's is is a pretty special place. Um, that's going to be the most popular answer you're going to get from people. Um, so that, that's a big one. I will tell you right next door to Nick Henry's is probably my go-to. It's just been since middle school, it's been there. It's, uh, um, it's called Athens. It's just a burger club sandwich kind of place, onion rings, half and half, get a little coleslaw on the side. Um, they've got some other things, steak fingers. Listen, I don't even look at the menu. When I walk in there, it's like, <laughs> I, I know I'm getting the baby club half and half, which is mm. great for you, by the way. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. All right. And then, or I'm getting, you know, the jumbo cheeseburger plate. What makes it jumbo? I don't know. It's just what they <laughs> All right. Half and half. It's always half and half. Or steak. If you really want to feel 
good about yourself while you're eating, but real bad later on, you know, you get the steak fingers and, and it'll. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. But man, it's so that's a good one. Then you got Rubens. OK, they're all kind of tucked together. Now, Rubens is are probably some of the best wings that I have had. Um, the, I don't know if you remember a place called Chiefs. Uh, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I don't know the story, if it's the owner, the cook, somebody. Um, broke off from there. Whenever that place de- disassembled, they came over and and uh, created this place. That's the that's the wise tale. I don't know. If, I don't yeah. know. I don't know the people over there. Um, I know this. I don't go late at night because they got karaoke. Uh, and I and I, although <laughs> I, I think that's hilarious and I love the people watch. I'm not gonna get up there and I'm not. Um, I'm I, I'm just kind of an earlier guy than what I used to be as far as get home. So if I go, it's gonna be sometime earlier. And um, but man, the wings and listen, I don't know. I don't I hate a slimy wing. OK, so you got to ask for your wings ex- extra crispy. Yes, That's sir. What I do. And they've got and, and you, they certain times when you go, you guys, if you come through here to watch a game, you know, you're going to be, be on a Friday. So you're going to miss out. But one t- one day a week, I think they've got like all you can eat wings. Arnold's is a great burger place. These are these places are all in this like plaza. Oh, yeah. pretty much. Um, and if I'm leaving anybody else out. Hate it for you. You're not giving me any free food. So <laughs> I love that. Well, well, coach, you know, uh, maybe it's a, it's on a in your office on a Friday or maybe on the bus to an away game, but you know, what's on your pregame playlist? Do you like kind of, you know, getting the music to get you ready to roll, uh, to get out there on the field? It it I'll tell you this. Our kids, you know, they they play stuff that I don't even recognize. I mean, you know, it's if and I I, I don't listen to a lot of times I'm trying to, you know, either not taking that, but just shut my eyes. Because, man, you got a million things running through your head. I don't listen a whole lot. of. Me- I listen to music all the time. So it's very ironic that I don't listen to it on a bus. You know, now if we're coming back from someplace, the game is over with, you know, maybe. Um, but I just kind of have my routine. But, man, if I had a playlist, you would hear an assortment of about everything. I mean, it's 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 anything from country to, I mean, it would be something heavy metal. It'll be, you know, there's there's a lot. I mean, it's I'm a big red hot chili peppers guy. I love them. They can kind of get me going. I Man, you can go back as corny as it is, you can go back to the Rocky soundtrack and listen. I mean, that one song when he's in his Ferrari and Rocky Four driving down the road after Apollo <laughs> Creed passed away, pretty daggum good song. Yeah, okay? so, yeah. And, and, and that's and that's kind of evolved around here, a little Rob Zombie stuff like that. And then and then some country, you know, sprinkled in there. Um you know, so just a little bit, a little bit of every everybody. Um, and, and the kids would make fun of me. They would think that's a Bruce Springsteen. You can't go wrong with Fleetwood Mac. So a bunch of bunch of that kind of stuff. But I do. I listen to music constantly. It just the one time I really don't is kind of like before the game. Now, our kids in the locker room are listening to stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what we're what, I don't even know what it is. So I just and this it's probably best I don't. So it just hard hit. Yeah. Sorry, Coach. Hard hitting journalism here. I got to ask you, what country are you listening to? Kevin listens to this new stuff, and I don't even know yeah. what that is. So, um, you know, I cut off. You know, I cut off about like 2010 ish, pre 2010. I don't know what Kevin listens to. I, I tell you, so <clears throat> I'm a little all over the place with that too. So I'm a big Jason Aldean guy. Big okay. Jason Aldean. I went to a concert of his. My daughter and my wife got me these tickets when he was up in Charlotte two years ago. And I've been to a bunch of concerts, probably the best concert I've been to. Why? Because you know the words to his songs. Yeah. He puts on a great show. He plays forever. The crowd was into it. Um, great. I mean, so that's that's a – I'm listening to him a bunch. Um, Don Williams, if you want to go way back, man, Don mm-hmm. Williams is very, very hard to beat. If you if you don't like Don Williams, then you've got something wrong with you. Um, George Strait, you know, is, is, a, is a huge one, you know. And that's that's just that's just some of them. But um, yeah, man, I, I just I'm all over the place. I, I listen. I've, I've been to Ozfest to see Ozzy Osbourne, and they had you know oh, Rob man. Zombie, and they had um, System of the Down, and all these, and that was pre-child, pre-my child, by the way. Okay, and then you go to you know I've seen Eric Clapton in concert, and Metallica, Bruce Springsteen a couple times. You know, Elton John, Billy Joel, you know, and, and so it'd been all over the place. But that Jason Aldean concert was so if I'm telling you that was impressive, man, it was it's pretty high up there on the list. 
Yeah, he puts on a, a good show, no, no doubt yeah. about it, Coach. Yeah. Uh, last one here for you. You know, do you guys have any goals set for this 2024 season for the Powder Joe Patriots? You know, we have not gotten together yet. Um, and it's kind of by design. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're, there's a process, and that's just what works for us. But we'll talk about it, and I encourage our kids to get together them and talk about it. You know, talk about what are their goals um, team-wise, individual-wise. Um, and I'd like for us to get some kind of a chart, like accountability chart going this year. I, I don't believe that, you know, we, we talk a whole lot about winning a region, winning upper state, winning state. We didn't do it two years ago. We just we we knew, you know. If and and I've said this to you guys before, said it a lot of people. I, I do. I believe in the whole one and O deal, man. You just got to focus on the here and now. If you get too far ahead, now there might be some teams that are just loaded, and that's their tradition, and they know, you know, they're like, man, if we don't win this, and it's a failure of a season, I believe you got to find some success in everything you do, man. Like, hey, today we had a great practice, you know. Hey, t- tomorrow, let's do the same and have a great – and let's stack those up. And then, man, I think that's a recipe for success. Is that the way everybody does it? No, but, I mean, here that's that's what we do. I mean, you got to enjoy the moment. Um, because there were some times last year where, man, I was flat out miserable. And so with other coaches and our players because we weren't where we wanted to be. But then when we look back on it, we're like, yeah, we lost this game by this point or this point. And like, we're so close. And you got to find some – some happiness and, and some success and something you're doing. It's it's out there. You got to look for it, man. And, um, you know, these kids only got four years with us. I want them to think that, you know, they're doing some good things and they are. And uh, so we're looking forward to now. I hope all those things I said that we don't talk about. I hope all those things happen, you know, but, um, but I mean, there's, there's gotta be some luck on your side too. And staying healthy is one of those things. Well, this has been great. I want everyone to go check out the Powdersville program on Facebook and Twitter. They do a great job posting updates about their kids and their program. Definitely follow them on there. Like I mentioned, follow us on all social media platforms. Movingchange.com is our website and our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Moving the Change brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. Drill, any else for Coach, we'll let him go today. Well, first off, Coach, thank you so much for your time today. Um, Kevin and I, we, we do like pre-production stuff. We, we make lists on coaches that we want to talk to, and then we make coaches, you know, coaches we have to talk to. And you made the had to this year because we hadn't caught up with you in a while. And it's always great to speak with you uh, because you're actually the first head coach to give us a shot and speak with us long form. So we'll be forever grateful for that. Yeah. We wish you a, a happy, healthy season. We hope you guys, you know, do everything and achieve the goals that you're you're looking to do each week and uh we'll certainly be rooting for you and uh thanks thanks again for your time hey man no thank you guys and i think this uh, this is something you need to know you guys took a chance okay putting this thing together and it's i mean if if, if it would have flopped oh well you took a chance right you got to put your best foot forward but y'all took a chance and this thing is taking off i think it's like a thing now that, that people are <laughs> like man i want to be on there or or like they mentioned me or my school. And, I, you know, you got your, your preview deal that came out the other night. You know, of course, I'm going to listen a little bit about one and three A and, you know, polls and, and stuff. Like, and I, I'll use that as motivation for the kids if, if it if it's not something flattering. But, you know, it's kind of middle of the road for us. You know, there's a little talk, a little not talk. But but just I'm entertained by it. You do your research and stuff. And I mean, hats off to you because more than anything, you're giving the kids exposure. And there's and and it's there's some kids in the lower part of the state, man. If I don't play you, I don't really keep up with you, but I'm forced to hear something about you. And I think that's a good thing, you know. So I want to thank y'all so much for what you do. Y'all keep up the good work. We really appreciate that, Coach. Uh, I said your program has meant a lot to us over the years. So we appreciate your support as well. And look forward to, to stopping by our practice or game and get to see you again here soon. And uh best of luck this season. All right. Y'all take care. Get ready for the ultimate South Carolina high school football experience with Moving the Chains. From previews to recaps, we've got you covered. Dive into our expert preview shows, predicting winners and sharing insights. Then join us post-game for the thrilling recaps, exclusive interviews, and highlights you won't find anywhere else. Plus, connect with fellow fans on our Friday night spaces on Twitter slash X. No one covers South Carolina high school football like us. Join us at Moving Chains on all social media platforms and visit movingchains.com today.